Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I will be talking about reproducible AI using PyTorch and MLflow. My name is Kita Chauhan, and I lead the AI PyTorch Partner Engineering at Cisco. So the agenda today is we'll go over the PyTorch uh, community growth, then dive into the reproducible AI challenges, and look at the solution using MLflow and PyTorch, and then do references for you. So the PyTorch community is growing at a very rapid clip. So yeah, we now have uh, over 1,600 contributors to the PyTorch repo. So this includes contributors from companies like Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Uber, MIT, uh, CMU. It has been uh, more than 50% year-over-year growth. And we have a very active user forum as well with uh, 34,000 plus active users participating. So we are very happy to see this. And if you take a look at the published papers with the framework results, you will see that more than 48% of papers uh, that are getting published are on PyTorch now, which is a great uh, growth. Inside Facebook, uh, our, the data in our ML pipelines is growing very rapidly. In 2018, we had 30% of the data in our warehouses was being used for machine learning. And now uh, more than 50% is being used for machine learning. And at the same time, we had a 2x growth in the overall size of our, our data warehouse. So if you compute through the math, you will see that this is more than 3x growth overall for the ML data. The number of uh, software engineers who are building these machine learning models, that is also increasing. We have seen a 2x growth in the unique number of users running the models runs. The complexity of the workflows is increasing and the number of the workflows is increasing. So as a result, uh, the overall uh, compute load on our uh, training clusters has increased down over to 8x. So let's dive into some of the reproducible AI challenges. Unlike traditional software, machine learning has a very continuous and iterative process for building out the models. Here, one is optimizing for a metric like accuracy. Uh, the quality of the data is what determines how good your models will be. You have to tune the parameters. Experiment tracking is very difficult. Uh, you run into challenges like over time, your data changes, which results in model drift and uh, poor performance of the models. One has to compare and combine many different libraries and models to get to the optimal performance. And due to the diverse uh, deployment environment, packaging the models and running them for inference is still a big challenge. In the past few years, there have been a lot of issues on the research front for the reproducibility of the results of a paper. Uh, it is because the data is missing or the model base or the scripts are missing. It is very difficult to reproduce the exact same results what were there in the research paper that was published. Similar challenges are seen on the production side where the hyperparameters changed or you know the features or the data on which the model was originally trained is not available. The vocabulary that was used for an NLP model, for example, got lost and people who had originally created these uh, models are no longer with the company. So over time, when these models are running in production, uh, it is very difficult to go and uh, get a new version of these models. So to tackle some of these challenges on the research side, the reproducibility checklist was created. And at uh, NeurIPS 29, the challenge with the reproducibility was launched. And just by introducing the reproducibility checklist, there was a big improvement. 75% uh, papers that were submitted at NeurIPS uh, had codes with them. A uh, total of 173 papers were submitted uh, with the as part of this challenge, which was a 92% uh, 
increase compared to the ICLR uh, last year. So reproducibility checklist contains things like uh, dependencies. Does the model repository have all the instructions to how to set up the environment? Does it include the training scripts and the evaluation scripts on which the model was uh, run? And uh, does it have the pre-trained models? Uh, are the scripts available for the results and uh, the table and the plots of the main results published? So at Facebook, we have been looking at how to simplify and improve the experience. So we just launched the integration of uh, Archive with Papers with Code, uh, where you can now get the code corresponding to a paper right from the Archive site itself. So you click on the code tab and you get the code. So you no longer have to hunt for the code corresponding to a paper. So this is a huge step forward on moving towards uh, reproducible research. So let's look at the solution on the production side by combining MLflow with PyTorch. Uh, we can get to reproducibility for models that are deployed in production. So MLflow comes with a great set of features for uh, experiment tracking, uh, the model, uh, the projects for the uh, models, uh, registry, the models for deployment. And by integrating PyTorch into each of these components, you can now get uh, reproducible uh, for the PyTorch models running on MLflow. So the features that we are launching include uh, PyTorch auto-logging, uh, examples with the ML project, cross scripted versions of the models, uh, with the save ability to save and load artifacts. Uh, we are launching a new thoughts of deployment uh, plugin as well. So let's look at the MLflow auto-logging. Uh, so PyTorch auto-logging feature has been implemented using the PyTorch Lightning training loop. So all you have to do is import the module, the auto-logging module, uh, write your uh, training loop, uh, the script as usual, and call a single line uh, auto-log, which will log the parameters uh, by default. So it will log things like the hyper parameters for learning rate, uh, model summary, optimizer name, uh, things like best store, min delta. You can control uh, callbacks, like uh, early stopping callback. You can log for every n iterations. You can also have user-defined metrics like the F1 score or the test accuracy. So this here is an example of what the model uh, experiment run comparison looks like in MLflow. So this is for a pruning model example across the different iterations. So you can select all the experiment runs and compare and get the results. On the save artifacts front, we have enhanced the uh, MLflow PyTorch save model function to add the ability to save the extra artifact. So this can be extra artifacts for NLP models like vocabulary, or if you need to pass the requirements or text for running the models with uh, talk so. We've also added support for uh, talk scripted models. So uh, all you need to do is convert your model into a talk script. So you call the torch git script to convert model to script mode. And then when you call the MLflow PyTorch log model, you can save the scripted model. So Torch script is an optimized version of uh, the model, which can run in a Python free process, uh, which is what we recommend for running models in production. And if you need to load the model, it is again the exact same, the very same command for loading models, the MLflow uh, PyTorch uh, load model. So we recently launched a talk serve for serving models in production. So this was a co-development with uh, AWS. Our talk serve comes out of the box with many common uh, handlers for the default use cases like uh, image segmentation, text classification. You can create your own custom handlers, and it, you can get easily started with a model zoo, which is provided. 
you can serve multiple models on the same uh, model server. It supports model versioning. You can roll back to an earlier version of a model. You can do automatic batching of the inferences. Uh, you can you get all the logging capabilities with the common metrics, and we have support for Prometheus metrics. Uh, we've added integrations with SageMaker, Kubernetes, and there is a very robust uh, HTTP uh, API for management and inference, and we are adding support for gRPC as well. So in the MLflow deployment plugin, we have now created a very easy way to deploy these models as part of your MLflow uh, project itself. So all you need to do is call MLflow deployment uh, predict, and then you can launch the predictions on your models. So both the CLI and Python API versions of this is uh, supported. You can run Todd serve either on your local machine or a remote machine and you can run your inferences uh, once you deploy your model from your uh, MSO model registry. Okay, so let's uh, dive into a demo. So I have the MLflow UI already running on the machine, and uh, we will start an MLflow experiment run. So uh, show you what the project looks like. Uh, so we have the MLflow project set up with the uh, parameters that will be passed and the command line that will get executed. And then all you need to do is call the MLflow run dot. I don't want to launch a new conda environment, so I'll just pass the you know, conda with it. And the model run will start. And while we are waiting for the run to execute, uh, let me show you what some of these model runs look like. So just before the uh, presentation, I ran a previous version of this. Uh, so as you can see, all the parameters are logged automatically when the auto log function is called. So this includes things like path size, epochs, learning rate, optimizer name. Uh, you get all the artifacts associated with the model. So you get the model, the actual model file itself. Uh, you get the ML model version of this with all the uh, parameters inside it. You get the model summary with all the layers. So let's look at some of the more complex models that we have been running across our team. As you can see, lots of experiment runs over here. Uh, and uh, you can select multiple iterations and do the comparison. Uh, you can get the contour plot. You can do the uh, parallel coordinate plot, etc. cetera. Let's finish with this one. Let's go back to our here, we now see a new model experiment run got added, and we can see the, all the um, parameters that were logged along with the uh, model details. So let me walk you through now what does the research to production cycle at Facebook. So we often start with a new idea or a paper, and now with the integration at the archive, it is a lot easier to just start with the code of the paper from uh, archive and papers with code. Uh, we model, we author the model, and then we do the training of it, the evaluation of it, a lot of parameter sweeps to get to the optimal version of the model. Once we are satisfied with uh, you know what that model looks like, we deploy it to a small subset of our users at a small scale and collect the metrics. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we analyze those, and once we are happy with the results, then we start to do the process of productionizing the model, so which involves uh, uh, exporting to ThoughtScript, doing all the validations, doing all the performance tuning. Then we get to a ThoughtScripted version of the model, which gets deployed on our C++ inferencing backend. So all this is now enabled through MLflow integrations, uh, the different points that we saw. So from the papers with code, uh, you can get the code as a starting point. 
as you're running and building your model, all the model experiment runs get saved on the MLflow experiments, uh, the uh, training server, and uh, you can save the versions of the model in the model registry. And once you are ready for uh, optimizing and deploying your model to production, you can start script your model and save that in the model registry. And finally, you can package it with uh, and bundle it and deploy it on the MLflow sorts of deployment plugins. So we are continuing to do more development with MLflow and uh, PyTorch. So in the future, you can expect integrations for model interpretability with Captain, uh, hyperparameter optimization using ACT, and both of you are adding many more examples. And here are some uh, references for you to quickly get started. So the PyTorch 1.7 release uh, just came out. Uh, the reproducibility checklist will be a great thing to review as you're looking at reproducibility for your own models and workflows. Uh, New Europe update is available. The archive papers just scored uh, is a nice blog that talks about the whole process. Uh, you will notice that New Europe 2020 has yet another reproducibility challenge. So if you're submitting any papers over there, please participate in that. The MLflow PyTorch autolog is available under the MLflow GitHub, uh, MLflow slash PyTorch, and the deployment plugin is going to be in a separate uh, repo, the MLflow, MLflow slash uh, dash uh, toss up. We'll be releasing a bunch of uh, Medium articles and blogs to go along with this. Uh, so if you go to the PyTorch Medium uh, site, you will get all the links. Yeah, so now I will open it up for questions. And uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or over email if you would uh, like any follow-ups.